who are found not criminally responsible for their actions. These events illustrate as well how our system does fail victims. Let me be clear about this. While it is true that the arm of the state cannot be everywhere at all times, and nor would we want it to be, nevertheless, when atrocious events do occur and the state fails to act, fails to do all it can do to defend innocent citizens, it violates the inherent trust upon which its existence is justified. Sera ma triste de dire, mais le cas de Madame Clark n'est heureusement, ma, n'est malheureusement pas unique. Is unfortunately not unique. Oh, the case of this person is un, not unique. With violent people across the country who are judged not criminally responsible, when we think of the atrocities that affect the justice system and all Canadians, and the current system justice system does not protect the victim. And no words of mine or anyone else's can ease the pain felt by the victims of such violence and their families. I can only promise you this. Our government has heard these victims. We are committed to change. And we are determined to keep moving forward on our criminal justice agenda. As the law now stands, violent individuals found not criminally responsible for their actions are released when a provincial review board, not a court, determines that, among other things, they are no longer a significant threat to public safety. And so within a few years, they may be released anywhere, even into the community where their victims reside. Currently, there is no obligation under law or regulation to warn the families of their victims that these violent people are returning to the community. No warning and no steps taken to protect them. But ladies and gentlemen, here is the biggest problem. Canadians have been shocked to learn that certain violent individuals who, while still in detention, have received unescorted day passes, unescorted day passes, despite still being a significant threat to public safety. We've heard from Canadians loud and clear, something here is very wrong. During the last election, we made a clear commitment to Canadians, and today we are acting on that commitment. I'm happy to announce that earlier today, our government tabled in the House of Commons a reform to settle the question of criminal non-responsibility in order to bring justice to the victims. Our government placed before the House of Commons a series of reforms to address the issue of not criminally responsible and to bring justice to victims. The law on reform of non-responsibility, criminal non-responsibility, will ensure that Canadians who obey the law will be safer, that rights of victims will go for, come first, that our streets and communities will be safe. The Responsible Reform Act will make law-abiding Canadians more secure, place the rights of victims at the forefront, and help make our streets and communities safer. First, with these reforms, the Provincial Assessment Committee that deals with those who have been judged not criminally responsible must, in the future, consider first public security. This legislation directs that when provincial review boards are dealing with persons found not criminally responsible, henceforth, the safety of the public must be the paramount consideration. Deuxièmement, Secondly, through the process, our reforms will increase and strengthen the rights of victims. Through the process, our reforms will elevate and strengthen the rights of victims. When an individual found not criminally responsible is released, the notice requirements will be expanded so that their victims and the families of victims are informed. As well, 
Review boards will be given the power to order non-communication between these individuals and their victims. Should the victim ask, provincial review boards will be able to order that these individuals stay away from designated places. Above all, and this is of greatest importance, we give courts the powers as they need to leave the individuals who are too dangerous to be released to keep them in detention. We are giving the courts the powers they need to keep those deemed too dangerous to release where they should be in custody. This legislation establishes a new category of high-risk mentally disordered accused. Violent individuals so designated by a court will be detained in custody. They will be prohibited from being released into the community by any provincial review board. These boards will have the option of tripling mandatory review periods for such designated persons from the usual 12 months to 36 months and provincial review boards will no longer be able to issue unescorted day passes to violent individuals who have been so designated by a court. Only a judge will be able to alter this designation, and only if that judge ha is persuaded that the designated individual no longer presents a high risk. I cannot put it more plainly than this. The Canadians and Canadians want a system of justice Canadians want a justice system that puts the safety of our communities and families first. system that puts the safety of our communities and our families first. And that is what these reforms will help us accomplish. Let me be clear on something else. Those who are deemed not criminally responsible will continue to have access to medical, appropriate medical care the system has been offering for some time. Individuals who are in custody will continue to remain so in secure uh, facilities, not in jail, and in defense of non criminal, not criminally responsible, will be an argument that has to be proven before court. will continue to have access to the proper medical treatment that the system has long provided. Individuals who are detained will continue to be held in secure mental health facilities, not prisons. And the defense of not criminally responsible remains a plea that an accused may make in court. Now, ladies and gentlemen, these reforms cannot undo the terrible things that have been perpetrated on victims like Darcy Clark and her children. But they will help her and other victims regain control of their lives. And they'll help ensure that our justice system puts the rights of the victims first. We have a justice system that puts the rights of victims first. As you know, their suffering has often been aggravated by a sense of injustice, the sense that they have been abandoned by the legal system. It is that sense that we can and we must address. Notre mission. Our mission, since our election in 2006, was to maintain uh, safety in our streets and communities. Our mission since we came to office in 2006 has been to keep our streets and communities safe. We have listened to victims and impo imposed tougher sentences for perpetrators of the most serious crimes. We've eliminated the faint hope clause, the clause that forced victims to unnecessarily relive terrible events. Our government brought in mandatory minimum sentencing for sex offenders who prey on our children. These criminals and more serious criminals will do, put out their sentences in jail instead of the comfort of their homes. offenders now have to serve their sentences in prison, not in the comfort of their living rooms. We've established the federal ombudsman for victims of crime to finally give victims a stronger voice. And we've invested in the Federal Victims Strategy, set up the Child Advocacy Centers, and enhanced the Victims Fund. These are all concrete measures that our Conservative government has taken to put the central focus of the criminal justice system back where it belongs on the rights of victims. We are on the right track. Now, of course, we still face 
substantial challenges as we move forward, but as Prime Minister Disraeli once said, la justice est la vérité en action. Justice, justice is, is truth, truth in action. action. And until every Canadian victim of crime knows that their concerns are felt and heard and acted upon by the justice system, our work will not be done and we will not stop until it is. Merci beaucoup. Thank you.